I heard a story about George Bush. Do you know George Bush? Do you know him? My uncle? Brother Clay doesn't know George Bush. Well, George Bush, according to the story, died and went to heaven. And when he was in heaven, he, he said to the angel, he said, I want to see Moses. Have you heard of this story? He said, I want to see Moses. Maybe he wants to interview him and uh, learn about his experiences during their uh, wandering in the wilderness. And so the angel went to Moses and said, Moses, somebody is looking for you. And he said, who? He said, well, there's a man called Bush and he wants to speak to you. He wants to talk to you. And Moses said, no way. Last time when I talked to a bush, I spent 40 years in the wilderness. <laughs> when I go to heaven, I want to see Job and uh, I want to ask him questions. And one of the questions I'll ask him is, is his birthday really February 30? Because some says that his birthday is February 30 because of Job chapter 3, verse number 6. And that's not our text today. And uh, if you will study that verse, his birthday is probably February 30. I just want to read verse 1, uh, a few verses here. To read and follow along as I read the verses, verse 1, 2, and 3. There was a man in the land of the world whose name was Job. A man that was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and stood evil. Uh, I summarize the life of Job with three words. One is his behavior, and this is his behavior. The Bible says he was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and is too evil. And then the second is his blessings. One is his behavior, the second is his blessings, verse 2 and 3. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. Verse number 3, his substance also was 7,000 sheep. Can you imagine that? And 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen. The Bible didn't say 500 oxen, but 500 yoke. So, ilan yon? 1,000 yon. Parish unit. And then the Bible says here, and 500 shiases and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. Let's jump to verse number 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also come, uh, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, of, of course you know the reason why Job uh, is in the presence of God. Revelation chapter 12 verse number 10 says that he is the accuser of the brethren, and he accuses us before God day and night. Okay. Now when Satan accuses us, he is not telling something that's not true. He is telling God some things that are true. When, when you do something that's wrong, then Satan will say, see, see what he did? He is accusing us before God day and night, but Satan is forgetting something. The moment you are saved, all of your sins have been blotted out by the blood of your life. Amen. And the Bible says here, And the Lord said unto Satan, When is comest thou? God knew that he would be accusing Christians again, and so the Lord said, uh, Satan said, Here, then answered, then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And verse 8, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feared God and is true with evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? I want you to see verse number 10. Hast not thou made an heads about him, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work with his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thy hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath, he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself, put not forth in him. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. This morning I'd like to bring you a message entitled, Blessed with a Heads. Blessed with a Heads. I changed the title from the handout that you have 
And I pray and I trust that God will use this message to bless your heart this morning. Loving you, Heavenly Father, we come before you again. And Lord, we pray that you will bless this message. And Lord, I hope, uh, I pray, Lord, that you will help us realize how blessed we are. And that the blessings that you have given us are not only tangible blessings, blessings that we can see, blessings that we can touch, but you have given us intangible blessings, true blessings. Lord, I pray that you will uh, help us this morning to see that we are blessed. We as your children are truly blessed people. Bless the message, bless your messenger, bless your servant. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, you may be seated. Uh, I have three things that I would like to, to share with you this morning. Uh, I told you earlier that Job was uh, a man who was greatly blessed by God. Na itong si Job ay talagang pinagpala ng Panginoon. Okay? Let me ask you this morning, are you blessed by God? He had so much blessings. We... Uh, we read verse number 2 and 3 and we see the blessings of the blessings of uh, Job. But Job's blessings are not only what is mentioned in verses 2 and 3. Yun yung kanyang mga blessings that are tangible. Those are blessings that uh, he, na pwede niyang hawakan. Those are blessings that he can touch. Those are blessings that he can see. But if you will listen very carefully to verse number 10, even Satan realized that Job uh, was blessed by God in a greater way. God blessed him with intangible blessing. And the Bible says here, verse number 10 says, uh, the Bible tells us here, Hast thou not made an heads about him? So I call that the blessing of uh, blessed with a heads. That Job was blessed with a heads. He was blessed with protection from God. And three things that I'd like to submit to you this morning. Number one, God heads his life. Or God made a heads on his life. We see that in verse, number, in verse number 10. Now what does that mean? God protected Job personally. And God does this to every one of his children. If you are a child of God, you are living under the protection of God. Amen? You are being protected by God. Every day of your life, you are living under the protection of God. Uh, Brother Renel, in, in the message last, uh, uh, last uh, Sunday night, he mentioned about, you, you remember the story of Sadat Mesa and Pedro? They were thrown into the burning fire for nails, but the fire did not have power over the body, not even one single hair. In Daniel chapter uh, 6, verse number 22, listen to the testimony of, of Daniel when uh, he was cast into the lion's den. Daniel chapter 6 and verse number 22, Daniel said, My God had sent his angel. Ano yung sabi niyo? Ang bawang kristyano, God has assigned an angel towards over us. Amen? Amen? The Bible says, And God has sent His angel and shut up the lion's mouth that they may not hurt me for as much as before him uh, innocency was found in me and also before they all came how I done no hurt. We see how God protected Sadrach, uh, Mesa, and We see how God protected uh, Daniel. And we see how God protected even Jacob. I want you to see God's promise to Jacob. Turn with me to Genesis. Can you put this in the screen, Brother Ronald? Genesis chapter 28, uh, in chapter 28, verse number 15. 28 of Genesis, verse number 15. Let us look at this promise. Ito yung pangako na binitawan ng Panginoon or binigay ng Panginoon kay, kay Jacob when he was fleeing. Remember, Jacob was the supplanter. He just deceived the, his, uh, his, he stole his brother's birthright. Okay? And uh, God said to Jacob, And behold, I am with thee. Do you see that? And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places, whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land. What is the verse now? Okay? 
No lying words. I just read from the Bible here. Amen. I will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee. Sabi ng Panginoon kay Jacob, sabi niya, hindi kita iwan, I will not leave thee, until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. What a wonderful promise this is. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. This is God's promise to Jacob. And you know what? God keeps His word. God always uh, keeps His promises. He always fulfills His promises. We see a fulfillment of this, uh, uh, of this promise in Genesis chapter 31. Let's fast forward. Well, Jacob went to Padan Aram and he met a lady. His name was do you know the name? Rachel. Okay. And he ended up marrying Rachel. And then the sister Leah. And then she also married two other wives, the handmaids, Bilha and Zilpha. And so she worked with Laban for many, many years. And the time came that he had to make a decision to leave Laban. Anyone is Laban? No. Look at chapter 31. Uh, Brother Ronald, I want you to help me with this now. Chapter 31. Starting with verse number 22 down to verse number 21. Look at this. Let me read, let me read to you this verse. Jacob fled, and the Bible says this, and it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob fled. Umalis na si Jacob. And he took his brethren with him and pursued after him seven days. At seven days journey. And they overtook him in Mount Gilead. This is love and he pursued. He now will you see, see Jacob. And God came to Laban because Laban was very mad. He was very furious. It was his intention to hurt Jacob. And the Bible says in verse number 24, And God came to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night and said unto him, Take heed that thou speak not to Jacob either good or bad. God warned Laban, said he, uh, wag na wag kang magsasalita kay wag mong sasaktan si Jacob then Laban overtook Jacob now Jacob was pitched in his tent in, mount, uh, in the mount and Laban with his brethren pitched in the mount of Gilead let's go down to verse number uh, verse number 29 Laban is now talking to Jacob and this is what he said is it, it is in the power of my hand to do you work it is in the power of man to do you hurt. He is saying, why did you do this? He said, Jacob, why did you do this? Why did you run away from me? Why did you take my, my daughters? Why did you take, take my grandchildren? It is in the power of my hand to do you hurt. Listen to what he said. But God of your father is paid unto me yesterday. That was the night before uh, he finally caught up with uh, Jacob saying, Take heed that thou speak not to Jacob in your good or bad. See, God protected Jacob. God made a promise to Jacob that he will be with him. God protected, uh, God promised Jacob that he will protect him. And God fulfilled his promise to Jacob. Amen. Amen. Now, God put a heads around Jacob. God made sure that Jacob won't be hurt. Now, I want you to look at God's promise to you and I. Look at Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 5. Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 5 and 6. The Bible says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as you have. For he said, I will what? Can you say the words? I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And verse number 6, So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, I will not fear what money shall do unto me. God has given us His word every day. God, uh, God protects us. Look at your Bible in Psalms 121. We will be reading a lot of verses today. Psalms 121. I want you to see what God says here. Psalms 121, verse number 1 down to verse number 8. The Bible says this. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord. That walk it in his ways. That is exactly what Job did. Okay? You don't get one in the Job. And the Bible says, Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord. My question for you this morning is, Do you fear the Lord? Amen. The Bible says, You are blessed. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hand. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Verse number 3. 
Thy wife shall be fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Behold, that thou shalt be the man, be blessed that fear, that fear the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion. Uh, I am reading from 128 verses uh, 1 down to verse 26. And shall see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children and peace uh, upon Israel. Let's go to 121. That's also a good chapter. 121 verses 1 down to verse 8. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. But verse number 2. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. He watches over us day and night. And the Bible says here, The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. And the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. Amen. Amen. Verse 8, The Lord shall preserve thy going out, and thy coming in from, thine, uh, from this time forth, and even forevermore. What does it mean? If you are a child of God and if you feel God and you are you are behaving the way Job behaved, you feel God, you are upright. The Bible says God has blessed you with a hands. God is protecting you. Amen? Amen. When you drive, God is protecting you. And when you travel, God is protecting you. When you are sleeping, God is protecting you. God made a hands for his life. Not only that, but certainly God has his loved ones. God has his loved ones. God made an hands for his loved ones. Go back to the book of Job. Verse number 10. Thou was not, hast not thou made an hands about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? You know, when a man feared the Lord, God will not only take him, uh, take care of him personally, but God will also take care of his family. Amen? Amen. God will also take care of your family. That's the verses we read in Psalms 128. God will take care of your family. We have been away. I have been away from my children since 2011. I, I just go on vacation from time to time. And I just praise and thank the Lord. Because even though I am away, but God takes care of my children. Amen. And God takes care of your children. Some of you are working here and your kids are in the Philippines or maybe your kids are in Africa. But God protects your family. If you, are, if you fear the Lord, if you are upright before God, if you hate evil, God said, God promised that He will protect your family. Thank God for the protection He provides for you and thank God for the protection He provides for your family. Number three, uh, the last thing is God has his livelihood. God has his livelihood. God made an hedge for his livelihood. I want you to look at verse number 10 again. The Bible says here, Has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he had on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. The Lord blessed Job's business. Amen? Amen? Do you see what I'm saying? God blessed him. It was God who blessed uh, the, his work, his business. God is entrusted to Job so much work. By the Bible says in verse number 3, so that this man was the greatest of all the men in the East. He was very, very wealthy. You know, that reminds me of Psalms chapter 1. Go to Psalms chapter 1. I love this verse here. Psalms chapter 1, look at this. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of? His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law that he meditate, they might. Look at verse number 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the 
rivers of water that bring it forth its fruit in its season. So ever we do it shall prosper. Itong nakikita, itong nakikita ko ay Job. God blessed him personally. God, God blessed his family and God also blessed his uh, his business. God blessed his job. You know, God has given us uh, a promise regarding this. Turn to the book of Malachi. Do you love the book of Malachi? Some Christian when you say Malachi, they... <laughs> uh, Malachi in chapter 1. Three, okay? I know some of you are allergic to Malachi chapter 3, but every the verse. Look at what God said here in verse number 11. Hindi naman verse 10 yung babasahin natin. We will read verse 11. Because I know uh, you're hoping I would read verse 10. Okay? I'll read verse 11. Look at what God said. And I will what? What will God do? I will rebuke the devourer. Who is the devourer? Satan. What do you find that? First Peter chapter 5 verse number 8. The Bible says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, what does the Bible say? As a roaring lion, walking, uh, seeking whom he may devour. Satan is the devourer. Satan wants to devour your your family, Satan wants to devour your health, Satan wants to devour your 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 uh, your wealth, everything that you have. But God promises it, and I will rebuke the devourers for your sake. What is he saying? He will drive Satan away. He said, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saying the Lord of hosts. Oh, that's a blessing. Amen? Yeah. God, will, God is saying, I will protect you. I will protect your job. I will protect your business. This is the promise. But it is followed by a premise. May condition it all. Amen? Yeah. And it starts with verse number 8. The Bible says, Will a man have God? Pwede bang paglakawan ng tao ang Diyos? And the people answered, Of course, was no. And they said, Yeah. He have robbed me. But he say, Would even have we robbed thee? And God says, In tithes and offerings. And because of that verse number 9, the Bible says, He had cursed with a curse, for he have robbed me, even his own nation. And God said, Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And put me now here with, say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. God is saying, if you will withhold the tithes, He is saying, you are cursed with a curse. But if you will bring God's tithes, He said, I will pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And then He said, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Amen? Amen? He is saying, I will put a hedge. I will put a hedge around you. That is God's promise. God has uh, Job's life, his family, and not only that, also his business. We should thank God for putting a hedge on our jobs. Amen. I hear of people, you know, we, uh, every time I talk to people, they talk about uh, workers here in Qatar who are being sent home. QB, a very, very you know, a strong company in Hamad Hospital, and you hear of people being retrenched, being removed from the world. But I believe this with all my heart, that if you are a Christian who fears God, and you are a pride, and you love God, and you hate evil, I believe that God will also protect your job. Amen. He will do that. He will do that. But the story also reminds us how quickly things will change when the head is removed. Up to this point, everything was doing well in Job's life, in his family, in his business. Everything was fine. Until one day, he had a conversation with Satan. And Satan said, oh, see, Job loves you because you, you blessed him. You put an heads around him and his family and everything that he has. And Satan said, if you will remove those heads, 
I will gun for you, that Job will hate you, Job will desert you. And God said, okay. God allowed that heads to be removed to prove Satan that he was wrong. Amen. To prove Satan that he was wrong. He was not doing it to hurt Job. He knew Job. He knew Job loved him. But this story reminds us how quickly things will change when the heads is removed. God has placed that heads around you. Personally, in your family and in your job, God has protected you. But the moment God removes the protection from you, my, it will be a terrifying moment in your life. If you will look at verse number, let's look at verse number uh, 13. And there was a day when his sons was in the doors, and his daughters were eating and drinking wine. I don't think that is uh, fermented wine, by the way. In their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job. Somebody was running to Job and, and, and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain all thy serpents with the heads of the sword. And I only am left alone to tell thee. Job received this bad news, and the Bible says, While he was yet speaking, he was not finished giving Job the, the, the evil report. Then came another one. Then also came another and said, The fear, the fire of God is fallen from heaven and hath burned all the ship and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. One bad news after the other. And the Bible says in verse number 17, And while he was yet speaking, Nagsasalita pa lang hindi pa tapos magbigay ng kanyang report. There came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell among uh, upon the camels, and uh, have carried them away, yea, and have slain thy servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. You might be thinking, Wow, what a terrible problem, but the worst is yet to come. Verse number 18, And while he was, he was yet speaking, listen to this now. Then came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house. Verse 19, And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men, and they are dead, and I only am escaped alone to tell them. You see what happened when the heads was removed? Do you have any idea what will happen to you personally or to your family or to your job once God decides to remove that heads? But oftentimes we have neglected to thank God for that heads, that intangible blessing that He has given us. And sometimes we complain because our work is hard because we, we complain about those little things. But we have forgotten to thank God for His protection in our life, in our, in our personal life, to our family, and also in the things that we do. And by the way, if God decides to remove the heads from your life, what would you do? Kung decision ng Panginoon na alisin yung heads to because He has a purpose, if I have my way, I will ask God, Lord, please don't remove the heads. Lord, please keep protecting the members of Berean Baptist Church. That is my heart's desire. That is my prayer to God. But folks, God, sometimes He has a different plan. His ways are different and the Bible says that His ways are perfect. Amen? What would you do when God decides to take away the heads? And immediately you have, you feel something in your body, or maybe something happens to your family, or maybe you will receive the news that you cannot work anymore in your company. What will you do then? Well, what did Job do? The Bible says in verse number 20, Then Job arose and rent his mantle, and shaved his head, and fell down, to the ground, upon the ground, and worshipped. You see that? 
Maybe if God did this to you, you will never be in church next Friday. You will be so bitter against God. I've known people who went through some uh, some unpleasant things in their life and they allow those unpleasant things to make them bitter instead of making them better. But with what did Job do? The Bible says he worship. Listen to what he said and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What an attitude. Verse number 22, In all this Job sinned not, nor, nor touched God foolishly. He doesn't understand what God is doing in his life. He lost his wealth, his health, and even his children because after that first incident, Satan came to the Lord again. And God told him in chapter 2, Hast thou considered my, my servant Job? And he said, well, you allowed me to take away his belongings, but you still have that hands around him, and you, you don't want me to hurt him. Let me take away his help, and he will curse you. That's what Satan told God in chapter 2. In verse number 3, well, the Lord said, okay, you can do anything you want to do with Job, just don't kill him. Yun lang ang request ng Panginoon, wag na wag mo lang papatid, bahala ka mong gagawin mo. Well, you know the story, Satan afflicted him with boils from the top of his head to the soul of his head. Puro pigsa. Maganda sana kung ilumano yun kasi pigsa means his strength. Boy, it was all over his body. And his wife even said, Job, do you still retain your integrity? Why don't you just curse God and die? Look at what he said in verse number 10. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the head of God and not and shall we not receive evil? In all this, the Bible says, the Job sinned not with his lips. No, chapter 13, verse number 15. I want you to see those things. I want you to see his attitude. God has blessed you with that heads, but if God decides to remove that heads for whatever purpose he has, chapter 15, what did he say? Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. But I will maintain my own ways before him. He says, I will maintain my own ways before him. I will still fear him. I will still be upright. I will still stew evil. I will still love him. I will still offer to him. Another verse, 19, verse number 25. 19, chapter 19 and verse number 25. Look at what he said here. For I know that my Redeemer liveth. Kahit ganun ang mga pangyayari sa buhay ni Job, isang bagay ang natitiyak ni Job. Alam niya na ang kanyang tagapagligtas. Alam niya na ang kanyang Panginoon ay buhay. And that he shall not stand at the latter days upon the earth. Chapter 23, verse number 10. Start with verse 8. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there. And backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left, where he that work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, and I cannot see him. One day, Job was looking for God. He was looking forward and backwards, and at the right hand and at the left hand. And it seems like God was hiding from him. And he said in verse number 10, uh, verse, uh, in verse number, later part of verse number 9, he said, I cannot see him. But verse number 10, he said, But he knoweth the way that I take. He said, I know that God knows exactly what is happening to me. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Isn't that what Habakkuk chapter 3 says? Turn to Habakkuk. Ito yung, ito yung pag-uugali ng isang kristyano na hinahanap ng Panginoon. Hindi yung mga Christian, Christian who only loves God when everything is well in their life. 
They are blessed in their work. They are blessed with good health. Everything in the family is okay. So they come to church. They serve God. But with the moment the heads is removed, they become angry with God. They become bitter with God. That's not what God wants. Look at Habakkuk chapter 3, verse number 17. The Bible says, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall the fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall, shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall, cut, shall be cut off from the fold, and there be no, that, there be, that there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Amen? Amen. That's the kind of an attitude that God is looking among Christians. But folks, you are here today, and like Job, you are blessed. You are blessed with a hands. God has hedged you, your life. God has hedged your family. And God has hedged your business, your livelihood. God is good to you. Have you thanked God for those blessings? I hope that today you will come to the Lord with a thankful heart. And because of this attitude, if you go to Job chapter 40, verse number 10, down to verse number 15, we find that God blessed Job. In fact, he doubled what he had before. God was so pleased with his life that he blessed him again. Folks, if you are a child of God this morning, God has blessed you. Not only with tangible blessings, not only with blessings that you can see, not only with blessings that you can touch, but there are blessings that you can touch, there are blessings that you can see, and one of them is God's protection in your life, in your family, and in your livelihood. Bow your head, close your eyes, no one looking around. Shall we pray? Would you bow your head, close your eyes? But if the head are bowed and eyes are closed, no one looking around, who will say this morning, Pastor? Pray for me, God spoke to my heart. The Bible says in everything give thanks for this is the will of God. But maybe you have neglected to thank God. Well, every head are bowed and eyes are closed, no one looking around. Who will raise their hand this morning and say, Pastor, pray for me, God spoke to my heart. Let me see your hand. Raise your hand. Let me see. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You will put your hands down. If you are here this morning and you feel like the heads has been removed, just be faithful like Job. Stay true, stay faithful because one of these days God will bless you with double blessings. If you are here this morning and you are not saved, God loves you. He wants to save you. God gave His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He died on the cross of Calvary to save you from going to hell. If you have a friend this morning that's here and your friend is not saved, during the invitation, would you go to your friend and take your Bible and show that friend how they can know for sure that they will go to heaven when they die? Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for those hands that were raised this morning, signifying that you have reminded them, you have spoken in their hearts about some things that were mentioned in the message, Lord, today. Lord, thank you for the blessing of heads, for the blessing of protection that you have placed upon our life, our family, and even in the things we do. Bless this time of invitation in Jesus' name we pray. So we will stand. Just nobody going out, please. Everybody stand. If God spoke to your heart, would you come right now? Perhaps you need to come this morning because you have neglected to be thankful to the Lord for the blessings that He has given you. Our thing this month is abounding in thanksgiving. Are you abounding in thanksgiving? Would you come right now? If you're raising your hand, would you come? You are still alive, you know what that means? The Lord has protected you. What if the Lord will remind you of your ungratefulness? And on one of your travels this week, you might, you might meet an accident just to remind you what would happen if God would remove his heads from your life. You don't want to, you don't want that to happen. Well, be thankful every day. Every time you, you arrive to a place safe, then thank God for His protection. 
Every time you see your kids, they are not always around you. But every time your kids comes home, thank God that He made a hedge around our